All right. Well, good uh, Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening uh, to those of you joining us. Um, I'm going to give it just a couple minutes here for folks to join, and then we'll go ahead and get started. I'm realizing quickly I should get some hold music for this so we have something to listen to other than the uh, void that is the silence. I'm <laughs> just giving everyone just a, another minute here to uh, to hop on and at uh, two past the hour, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, everybody. I uh, hope everyone's settling in. Again, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, from the U.S., this is my name is Tim Stahl, and you're joining our Decisions Daily Lunch and Learn. Um, this is our schedule for the week here. You can see I've got, I am up today. We've got uh, Eric, who's in charge of our product team, uh, product roadmap team, uh, will be on tomorrow. So good chance to, to go in there and ask him questions about what's coming up. We've got Jared, uh, runs our sport team, coming up on Wednesday. And finally, the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Klein, uh, who is over one of our pre-sales engineering groups on Thursday. <clears throat> uh, just a couple a couple things real quick before we dive in. Uh, the just in case you missed it slide. So decisions end of life support. Uh, end of life date has been set for all versions up to and including version six. Uh, for new projects or questions on where to upgrade, we do recommend you go to our latest version, which is version eight. Um, of course, you can find this at releases.decisions.com. Um, it will ask you to create an account. Uh, that's just so we can track who is uh, actually downloading the software. Um, you can also reach out to your customer success manager to uh, you know, establish a, a regular upgrade cadence. Um, <clears throat> the dates below uh, just kind of give you an idea of where we're at in this process. So, of course, major version end of life on V6 and earlier uh, was back in June of 2021. Um, uh, end of life enforcement was announced. Uh, so we'll so say uh, ugh, stop providing service for V6 and earlier in December 2022. Uh, and then end of general support uh, on March 1st of 2023. And then kind of this total succession of end of life support on June 1st, 2023. So really important um, if you're still on six or before to reach out to your CSM and let's get you up to uh, the more the, uh, one of the latest versions here. And some other housekeeping, uh, just to announce uh, our next product roadmap session, uh, August 24th. Uh, so every other Thursday, the product team, Eric Weltmerink again, uh, he'll be sharing the future of the decisions no code intelligent automation platform. Um, it's a really great way to see what's coming up next. So what we have in, in play, what we have in flight, um, what we're uh, currently building and, and gives you, uh, you know, a chance to have some feedback, right? You know, we really want to drive the development of the product to fit your needs. So please feel free to join, bring your uh, your feature requests and your, your nice to haves, your must haves and your wants. Uh, and we, we love to hear all of it. Um, again, you can reach out to uh, decisions.com forward slash events to find that uh, link. So uh, the last little uh, bit of housekeeping uh, will be, you know, again, this is a live lunch and learn, so feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, we do ask that you use the uh, either the chat or the Q&A features, uh, both of which you can find it, uh, on your Zoom screen. Um, you simply click into there, you can ask a question, um, and we will try our best to answer it uh, here live. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. We we had a, a couple of questions that were submitted uh, prior to the start of the Lunch and Learn today. Uh, and the first one's actually pretty easy. So it's uh, the question was uh, setting up the designer access for devs in production, but they only have view permissions. 
Now, you do have the ability to set things up where a developer can view. The, the problem you run into, though, is that the we don't have a way to limit what they can do with the designer. So you could actually create you know, some, uh, some permissions uh, on a folder like I've done here, this test folder. I've got my, my admin account, of course, has access to everything. I was just doing that to test. Um, and of course, the dev account, uh, if we look at that, I gave them the ability to can use open and view. The problem, what happens here, though, is this will give them access to do exactly what it says. If there's a flow in there, they can use it. If the folder is available and they can see it, they can open it and they can view the contents of that folder. So these first three here are really around whether they can use the entities and their flows, reports, what have you. The can open and can view are really based on the folder. So this doesn't affect their ability to open, say, a flow in the flow designer. Um, they have to have edit, add, or delete to get that ability. And the problem is as soon as you give them can edit, then they can make changes. So what I would suggest is um, either submitting a, a ticket to support at decisions.com with this uh, information that you'd like to have this as part of the uh, permissioning and decisions, um, or join that uh, join that product roadmap session and, and bring that up with, with uh, Eric and the team. Um, they'll be glad to hear the uh, feedback from you and, and take that into consideration in our next releases. Um, <clears throat> uh, next question we had set up, uh, can I redirect a user somewhere after a catch exception step? So that's a good question. Let's uh, let's give this a quick test here. So we'll say catch. Now, are you thinking like you would redirect them to somewhere else in the decision studio or portal, like maybe a page or something, or were you thinking it would be maybe uh, you know another URL or something like that? We can try it either way here. Indecisions, got it. Okay, so let's do something here that'll break. Um, let me get a row exception step. Oh, that was terrible. Okay. And then we'll get a catch. Why is it like testing? So that's interesting. That is not the right. There we go. That was weird. I'm not sure why I had the... Uh, uh, so we should be able to do uh, an end form session here. And with an end form session, what you can do is redirect a user so you can navigate them um, to a different uh, different place in decisions, to a different URL, display a message and navigate. We'll do that one. That one's fun. Um, oops, you found a bug. Um, and what we'll do is we'll tell them, let's see, what folder do we want them to go to? Well, let's uh, let's make a new one here. New folder. Uh, let me go ahead and move that out to the root because I didn't do it right the first time. And we'll go ahead and we'll say, okay, if they if they run into an error, we want them to to show up here in this folder. Let me go ahead and get the uh, folder ID of this. Come into our end form session step and throw our folder ID in it. Uh, the page name, there's no page in this case, so we'll just leave it to ignore, and we'll say done. So now if I go ahead and save this flow, exit out of it, I should be able to right-click run flow. Oops, you found a bug. We got our message, and we've been redirected somewhere else within the platform. So that end form session is a real easy way to do it. Um, it's, it's kind of a useful, uh, useful little step that you can use uh, all over the place. I, I use it in a lot of pages. Um, if someone you know, navigates on a page and there's, you know, uh, you know, I want them to go somewhere else. I can use this to redirect them to that particular folder. And if you have folders that have multiple pages on it, you can actually tell it which page name to go to as well. So you can actually use these like little navigation <laughs> uh, steps as well. That's just another idea. So that's, that's kind of one way you could handle that uh, with the system. Let's see. Um, Question regarding, so we had another one come in. Question regarding a horizontal timeline, if they can be dynamically displayed. We have some steps that depending on what is chosen, they'll be skipped. We'd either like to show them or not show them as done. Okay, I will come back to that. Let me ask, the, uh, in flows where async steps are not allowed, you are correct. I do not think that's going to work. Um, something like a... Uh, 
uh, uh, yeah, those those uh, those various flows that that when uh, they don't allow the asynchronous steps, I I think you're right on that. Um, what we can do is let me answer this other question, and then we'll come back to it and see if we can build one of these and see if we can break it or make it work. <clears throat> so on the horizontal timeline here, I believe, and we'll we'll just have to take a look here, but I believe that that what you're saying. Uh, I think it has to, you have to have them show up. Uh, you, you have to know they have to be constant, basically. Uh, I don't know that they allow dynamic. So let's, let's see here. Grab a timeline here. Uh, sources from folder data name. Well, I don't know. It does look like you can do this. Um, you can do it dynamically. Uh, current state. So if we define the states, and we say, you know, show me just the current state. I should be able to say, okay, here. So we have that sitting there. I should be able to now make a quick flow that allows me to show those states. And we'll do a show form step here. I'm going to pick that form I just built, a horizontal timeline on it. Say, okay. And let's see here. This is going to be a list of list of states. Uh, yeah, we'll just do it right here. This is fine. Build array. Okay. State. State one. Oops. Uh, add state two, and we'll make state three. And we'll tell it we're currently on state two. Okay. Now, if we debug that. We can see, but we're on state two. So we have one, two, and three, and we're on number two. So the logic follows that if you had, say, a process, uh, as you're saying, you have some steps that depending on what they choose, it'll be, you know, skipped. Then what you could do is as you're building this list of states, you know, maybe for each thing they're doing, you have a state that's output. You're, you build a list of them, and then you just pass that list in with the current state. Because now I could say, you know, Based on this, I can say, you know what, I, I'm not going to do state two anymore. We're going to skip it. Or actually, let me, I hit the remove on the wrong thing here. So we're going to skip state two. So I'm not even going to pass it in anymore. And now when I go to debug, you can see I only get state one and three. Two is gone because we never passed it in. Um, and then, you know, basically I told it to start over in state one. So, so the idea there is, yeah, you absolutely can uh, dynamically display them. Um, you would just have to build that list of states um, as you're going. So, you know, you could have a, a, you know, create data with a list of states in it, like a string list of states. That's an example here. And then maybe you have a, a process that um, as, as you're going through it or as they're selecting X, Y, and Z, you could say, you know, add item to list. And for each one of those states they go through, you know, we could add that to the, maybe to the end or to the beginning of the list, however you want to do it, and then pass those into the form. And that would, that would show your, show your states in the, in that order. Let's see. Um, all right. Flows where async steps are not allowed. Let's, let's see here. Oh, what kind of flow would we need to be to do that? Uh, do, 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 do. I know the triggers won't let you, if I remember correctly. I just run into an, one where an async wasn't allowed the other day, and I'm trying to remember what it was. I'll try that. Uh, nope, this one still seems to. Uh, this one still seems to do it too. Flow. I think the check-in flows don't allow you to. Let's see, it's let me do it. Hmm. Yeah, this Ah, that's fair. Yeah, we can do that. One second. Let me set this back to what it needs to be. 
set flow behavior flow. And we'll go ahead and pick the one that we just did. Hmm. That let me do it. Let's see if it complains when I'm in here. It doesn't complain. I'd be real interested to see what this does. <laughs> Let's run it. Nope. <laughs> Good call. Uh, yeah, when it kicked off async, it's async. So the 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 context of what session to to navigate the user to is lost because it's it's uh, asynchronous. So that's a good call. Um, yeah, in that case, it, it's not going to know, um, right? Because it's 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 kicked out of the the current user context into an asynchronous behavior. So unfortunately, um, yeah, as soon as you do that, it's it's not going to know who to who to move anymore. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I just, you know, see if there were any other questions that had come in or anybody had any topics they wanted to, to discuss or go over. Um, you know, one of the things we could look at that, that's kind of not widely used, but can be, um, Know, kind of a neat thing to to play around with. I don't know if anybody's ever tried using our new uh, newer uh, simple forms here. These are really uh, really straightforward. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I had a question come in as I was reading that off. Um, user login flow does not run after SSO type login. So okay, yeah. So why doesn't it? So there's. When you have when you have single sign on turned on, there's actually a separate flow that runs for that. Um, <clears throat> you actually get the uh, and I don't have single sign on set up on mine, so it won't it won't show up. But there's actually an SSO after SSO login flow. I believe that takes precedence once you have SSO turned on. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you couldn't uh, reuse the logic from your regular user login flow with it, but um, it, it does, if I'm not mistaken, uh, dump over to the SSO login flow instead of the uh, standard user one. Um, so one of the, one of the things we have now, um, and and I found these to be very useful if you have just um, if you have just some easy simple forms you're trying to create for users. Are these these uh, the idea of the simple forms now within decisions? Um, it really makes it easy to have a real straightforward, simple process for a user to enter data into the system without having to have a whole lot of uh, worry about setting up grids and ensuring things are aligned properly. We kind of take all that all that off your hands, and these are set up more like a Google form. Um, which if you ever use those, are real straightforward. You basically say. Okay, you know, I want a, a text field here, and it's going to be their name, um, and maybe then I want a uh, maybe I want a, a label above it here that says, you know, enter your name as an example. Um, you know, you could have a, a button at the bottom here that says okay. You know, we could even, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on here, you can even have a, a button panel that automatically puts a cancel and an okay at the bottom. You know, it makes it real straightforward to. You know, here's like a date of birth. You know, if you need that real simple uh, data, that real simple information, these are super straightforward to set up. Um, there's more controls and things you can do down here, file uploads, data grids. You know, a lot of our standard types work. It's just, you know, even if you want a little progress bar at the bottom of, uh, you know, how far have you gotten in the process? But you can see these just, as you just add to it, it just becomes, you know, just kind of grows that as you go. But then when you show these, they're actually really easy to to uh, you know to actually get um, you know set up. So for example, if we wanted to show this form, you know we drag a couple fields on here. We can go ahead and you know hit save on this. We could create our flow here to show it. Oops, got to spell it right. <clears throat> we can go to our show form. To create, we'll pick our existing, do our simple form, got our OK and our cancel. And then when we debug it, you can see I, I didn't have to do a whole lot here, um, but it makes it real simple. The, these, the controls are nicely styled. 
You know, it's very, uh, you know, kind of a really good base user experience that took me no time at all. Um, whereas if I wanted to design this in the form designer, I've got to set up the grids. I got to figure out the styling. I've got to kind of go through some other things, which there's times for that. There's times you need that. But sometimes you just need a real simple, basic, you know, please go fill this out and give me your information. Um, so just just something to be aware of that, again, doesn't get a lot of use, but um, I think it has more, I, I think there's more use for it than what we give it credit for right now. So again, um, it also works with our, our slide out navigation. Um, so if you've seen that, the right hand, uh, right hand slide out here, if I run it, you can see we can pop it this way, but you can also tell it to show up in the sidebar as well. So it kind of scrolls down the page too, which is, is really nice. Oops. So I did see um, one other comment came in uh, regarding the SSO type login. What I would recommend there is probably reach out to your CSM or your support rep on that. Um, there may be something I'm not aware of, but uh, um, but yeah, I would reach out to them on that on that SSO login flow, not allowing you to redirect users because there if if it if there isn't a way, then that's that's interesting because there definitely is on the user login one. So I, I would I would reach out to them and and uh, loop them in on that. Oh, just wanted to see if anybody else had any other any other questions or anything they wanted to, to kind of go through or go over today. Let's see here. I'm trying to think if I had um ah, here's something interesting. So I've already got it installed. And and I apologize, my I've broken my local instance because I I tend to mess with it. Um, but in your my apps folder, there's a, a lot of work being done by our solutions group to develop what we're calling accelerators. And what these are is, you know, typically the my apps folder had a lot of things in it that were you know full ad you know full apps right like a calculator, debt consolidation calculator, things like that. But we're developing more things to try and help you get started on your projects and have a way to. You have a starting point, have some, you know, um, maybe get some of the initial uh, product design done quicker for you at, at the at the very outset. And one of those tools that we've uh, released here is our CSS generator. And if any of you design forms, I, I, I know I'm UI heavy today. I apologize for the, the, the back end folks, but um, but. You know, if you've ever worked with, with CSS, it can be kind of daunting, um, especially the, the decision CSS is, is quite lengthy because there's a lot of components in the in the studio and the portal that if you're looking for your specific form, you know, knowing where that is and how to find it can, can be a little bit of work until you kind of get used to it. But what our solutions group do, did is came up with the CSS generator, which you can go to my apps and find it in the list and install it to your machine. And it gives you this, this folder under my apps and a, a, a flow here you run that walk you through a visual representation of how to build that CSS out. So if we were to run this, you know, we can give it a document name, we'll call it launch and learn. Um, but you can start defining what colors you want to use, you know, what are your primary, your secondary colors, your form background, and, and what this will do, and we'll actually walk through it here, I'll say like, maybe we just want a gray background, the font color is fine, the, we'll leave the font colors like they are, you can use different font families. So if you have a, you know, a uh, media styling guide or something like that for your company. You can use those actual colors and, and fonts here. Um, if we go to next, um, you'll see it's like, well, how do you want the, the background, the borders, bottom border only? Um, so we have some things that you can kind of come through here and click on, and you can see the changes in real time of what it'll look like. So again, you know, you can see as I kind of mess with this, what it does. But you can also go, you know, I don't know where to start. You can hit apply defaults and we'll just give you kind of a default look of what they could look like, right? So we, we can see the borders, you know, you can make them real large, real rounded corners, um, you know, bottom border only, you know, maybe if you don't like that background being uh, white there, we want it to be a little bit darker. We could say, okay, here's that. For accessibility, that's probably not a great idea, but it's just kind of show what we can do here. Um, and if you like what you see, you can go to next. Um, and there's also on how the buttons look, right? So we can also, we can start with default so we can see what it looks like here. But you can go through and really start, you know, we can round the corners off on them. 
But you can really go through here and get things to look exactly like you want without having to play with the code and, and being able to do it in real time and see your changes as you go is pretty neat to me. And if we go through next, we even set up some, some tiles. So if you ever use the tiles on our pages, um, this styling will allow you to simply select a primary uh, dark and secondary dark and a primary light and secondary light. So when you uh, place a tile on a page, you'll just select this as the type and you get that styling. So you don't have to think about it. You'll, you can just type in the name of it, you give it the value and whatever the filter is, and it just works. Um, you know, again, if you want to have a, a borders on here, you can do it. Um, you can style the icons in different ways. Um, but, you know, it really kind of gives you a, a good starting place. Like like this one, that, that dark isn't very good with a dark text, so we'll change it to white. And then when we hit next, this, this last form here, this is showing you a form with your CSS. So what you just selected, this is what it'll actually look like as you start building forms out. So you can go, well, maybe I like it. Maybe I don't. I want to go back and change some things. You know, you can, you know, go back, edit it, come back to your form, see what they look like. You can see that they have some styling associated with them that kind of do some hovers and things like that. What check boxes look like. Um, but then you can download the file. So if you want to play around with it, you can. Or you can save it to the server, which will actually put it right in decisions in the spot it needs to go. So you can start referencing it in your uh, forms. So if I hit save to server, we can see it's been added. And then if I went back to the forms and stuff we were playing with, so let's see if I have the, yeah, here we go. I can come into my properties. And if I scroll down here in my uh, style sheets, we'll see I have this lunch and learn one. And as soon as I apply it, boom, you can see that text is taken over. The button's been styled. So it just gives you a real quick way to start. Um, you know, again, if you know CSS, maybe this is a good starting point and then you can download it and edit it to your heart's content and re-upload it and see the changes. But uh, again, this is just a, a real quick and dirty way to get get yourself going, at least get close to your style guide, uh, make your UI UX people happy. Um, but yeah, that's a, just kind of one of the things I wanted to show off today. But that being said, I'll uh, do a last round and see if anybody had anything else they wanted to go over today. And... All right. Well, everybody, I will give you 30 more minutes to, to go and actually have lunch uh, instead of listening to me uh, right or on. <laughs> but uh, if you have any questions, please always feel free to reach out to us at uh, support at decisions or support at decisions .com, um, for, for anything you need. But uh, other than that, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you the next time. Thanks, everybody.